Memory is a child walking along a seashore. You can never tell what small pebble it will pick up and store away among its treasured things. My name is Frances Teresa Carpenter. I was born in 1916 in a section of Detroit that is known as Corktown. My mother's name was Clotilda Rose McCann. My father's name was Michael Francis Ryan. When I was eight years old, my mother died during childbirth. She would have delivered her only son. He died three days later. I am now 95 years old. I have come back to visit Corktown and to recall the days of my childhood so many years ago. Tell me what Cork Town was all about when you grew up here. Who, who mostly lived here? It was mostly Irish people, Irish Catholic, and interestingly enough, my grandparents were ones who helped to found St. Vincent's. And who were your grandparents? Uh, Ellen and Patrick Ryan. And when was that? Uh, that would be probably in the late 1880s. Oh my goodness. And you were born in Corktown? Yes, I was born in 1916 at uh, 3075 16th Street, which is now abandoned uh, to make way for an expressway. What about other houses that you lived in? Do you think we could possibly go see some of those? Yes, I'd like to do that. All right, let's go. I lived in this house from 1924 until 19... 31. How old were you? I was eight years old when my aunt invited me to come and live with she and her husband and their daughter, Mary Ellen. Now, what were the circumstances that you had to live with your aunt? <coughs> my mother had just passed away and left me an orphan, so I had to have somewhere to live, and Aunt May gave me a home, and I lived with her and Uncle Charlie and Mary Ellen until I was 13 years old. How many children uh, were in your family? How many sisters did I you have? I had three sisters, two older girls who were sent to the convent in Adrian at St. Joseph's for their, to complete their schooling, and one younger sister who went to live with my father on 14th Street as well in a house that has now been demolished. How does it feel? Take a look at the house. Feels great. <laughs> does it? Does it bring back a lot of memories? It brings back a lot of memories. Memories of the good times we had here and uh, the many, many happy memories I had. What was Aunt May like? She was good. She was very good to me. She treated me like one of her daughters and uh, Mary Ellen and I got along just fine. Was that her daughter? Yes, that was her daughter. And my father lived just a block away with Rosemary, the younger girl, so we could walk up there. And we often went over to uh, visit him. He lived with his sisters in the family homestead. And we called it going up home. And we did that almost every night during the good weather. 
we yeah. would all gather at the homestead and uh, everybody would visit and talk and gossip and uh, they would make tea and cookies and things like that. So it was a happy time all together. Okay, tell me, we have a building behind me called the Emmet. Tell me what the Emmet is. The Emmet is a terrace, and uh, my father and Rosemary and my two older sisters moved here in 1930 when I was 13 years old. And we li I lived here until uh, 1932 when I was 16. Why is it called the Emmet? Uh, the woman who owned it, her name was Emmet and she used to come over and check up on Rosemary and I. Very, just come in and want to look around and uh, tell us that we should be careful of the floors because uh, they had just recently been varnished and we should be careful not to, not to scratch them up. <laughs> but we let her come in and listen to her, which was a real invasion of our privacy. Yeah. But we didn't realize that at the time uh, that we were, that, that, that shouldn't have been. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Easy going, the Irish. Yep. <laughs> all right, so when did you move out of this place? We moved out of this place in 1932, and when we moved over to a flat on 14th Street. In, in which uh, which was yours? Is, is this we a were in the lower left hand unit. The people who owned it, their name was Heisey. Do you know what the rent cost here? Twenty-five dollars a month. How do you know that? I know. I remember. Did you have a telephone? No, we did not. No, we did. We have a radio. We were really living. Yeah. Living poor. Yeah, that's all right. But you were happy. We were happy. He swings the line shot. Base hit. Right field. The Tigers win it. Here comes Kaline to score. And it's all over. Don Wirt singles. The Tigers mob Don. Kaline has scored. The fans are steaming on the field. And the Tigers have won their first minute since 1945. As near as I can remember, my father was born and raised in this area, and he said that there was a park here called Bennett Park, and that was the original lot where the Tigers played back in the early uh, 1900s. Then it became Navin Field. It was Navin Field when I was a little girl, and I remember my father bringing me here to see Babe Ruth play. Who, Babe Ruth was a, a Yankee star who was really, really a very popular at that time. This was all about 1926 or 1927. Do you remember the game? I don't remember the game. I just remember being here. I didn't understand the game, but my father just said he just wanted me to be able to say, I saw Babe Ruth play ball. And you did. And I did. And now what do we have? Now we have a vacant field. Yeah. With some <laughs> and people. a lot of memories. Right now we are outside of a bar called that used to be called Reedy's. It's not anymore. Tell me the history of, of Bill Reedy. Bill Reedy's family was a neighbor of Grandma Carpenter. And when the children were born, Grandma Carpenter was a midwife who delivered those children. Who is Grandma Carpenter? Grandma Carpenter was my mother-in-law. All right, so that's my grandfather's my, yeah, mother. Uh, my husband's mother. Ella Gaffney Carpenter. And she delivered Bill Reedy? She delivered Bill Reedy. I remember the night that he was born. What did Grandpa have to say about that? Grandpa was called over to the house. I was visiting at Grandma, at 
grandma's house. Dad and I used to go over to her house and just spend a little time. And while we were there, his mother called him on the phone and asked him to deliver something over to Mrs. Reedy's. So he took the item over to Mrs. Reedy's and when he went in, Mrs. Reedy was in the last stages of labor and really um, in a lot of pain and doing a lot of screaming. And when he came back, he said to me, I'm never going to let you have a baby because I heard Mrs. Reedy and it must be very painful and I don't want you to go through that. But then he soon changed his mind after we were married. That's right. He had five beautiful children. Yes, we did. Absolutely. Do you remember Reedy's, uh, this bar here at all, or was this something that came after you, after you guys? I, I'm sure it came after. Yeah. After G, uh, Reedy was a grown man. Yeah. What was mom and dad's, what were his parents' name? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember, but they were right from Ireland, and they talked with the broke. What does that mean? An Irish broke. Okay. Quite a, quite a accent. So she was screaming, screaming and broke. Yeah, screaming and broke. Yes. Now we're in front of Holy Trinity Church, and this is where my husband James attended grade school. And when we were about to be married, he wanted to be married over here. And so I have acquiesced to his desire and we were married over here on the 2nd of March 1935. What do you mean he acquiesced to his desire? Where else were you going to get married? Well I went to St. Vincent's. Alright so that, that would have been... I went to St. Vincent's but he wanted to come back and the priest who married us was Father Juras. How do you spell that? J-U-R-A-S. What kind of name is that? Is that Irish? Yeah. Doesn't sound Irish. Doesn't sound Irish to me, yeah. No, it doesn't sound Irish. How was this how many people came to your wedding? Uh, we had quite a few people come to the wedding and then we had a reception at my sister's home in northwest Detroit. Which sister? In the, my sister Eleanor and her husband uh, Dick and we had a reception in the basement which most people did in those days and we the centerpiece was a keg of beer and sandwiches filled in, and uh, we just had a great time. Many years ago. Many years ago. Uh, and then, then we, uh, we rented a flat at, uh, on 12th Street, uh, an upper flat, uh, where we began housekeeping. Housekeeping? Housekeeping. What is that supposed to mean? Is that a house? Well, you and Grandpa were housekeepers, or, or do you mean that's where you no, reside? I mean, that was the family. First, let's say we domiciled. Oh, okay. All right, that's the that's old way of saying word. it. Okay. All right. That's a better word. Well, so this is our this is our tour of uh, Corktown, and you know you had a lot of good memories here, didn't you? Yes, I did. And this was many a, good memories of Corktown. How did you like the tour today? I loved it. I loved it, and I want to thank you for. For taking me. Well, you're welcome. What is your What is your great hope about Corktown? You think maybe someday it'll come back? Well, I hope it will come back. I think I really like the way the surroundings here. Uh, Holy Trinity is a beautiful scene here, and the church is in great repair. Uh, and I, I know it's the cornerstone of a lot of good works here. And we met a lot of nice people on today's. Yes, uh, yes I did. I met a lot of people who live here and work here, and uh, they were most gracious. Absolutely. Well, I think that's it. Say goodbye, Grandma. Goodbye. Well, I've been a wild rover for many the year. And I've spent all me money on a whiskey and beer. But now I'm returning with the golden great storm And I never will play the wider rover no more And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Will I play the wider rover No, never, no more